Okay, this is the regular meeting of the Board of Estimate Enforcement. Today is Wednesday, October 19th, 2016. Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Mayor Selene. Present. Council of Green. Here. President Reed. Here. Items presented for the first time. Item one, request from the Controller's Office for approval of contracts and leases for various city departments is listed on Exhibit A. Item two, request from the Controller's Office for approval of intra-departmental and interdepartmental transfers from various city departments as listed on Exhibit B. Item three, request from the Controller's Office for approval of transfers between projects for capital improvement funds listed on Exhibit C. Item four, request from the Acting Director Department of Health for approval to delete one neighborhood improvement specialist from Fund 1166, Department 710, and add one public information officer one, Fund 1166, Department 710, then delete one clerk, Typist 2, from Fund 1110, Department 719, and add one clerk, Typist 2, Fund 1110, Department 711. Item five, request from the Director of Airport for approval of Board Bill number 153. This ordinance authorizes and directs the Director of Airports and the Controller of the City of St. Louis to enter into a luggage cart rental concession agreement between the City and Smart Cart Incorporated. Item six, request from the Executive Director of St. Louis Development Corporation for approval of Board Bill number 149. This ordinance is for issuance of up to two $2,800,000 plus issuance costs, principal amount of tax increment financing revenue notes for St. Louis Grocery Real Estate LLC. This is a parcel development agreement to provide for the redevelopment of the Greenleaf project, which cost is approximately $19,665,000 and would result in approximately 79 new jobs. Item seven. Request from the Deputy Chief, St. Louis Fire Department, for approval of a board bill number unknown. This ordinance authorizes the Fire Department to execute a grant agreement with the United States Department of Homeland Security, Federal Emergency Management Agency, and assistance to firefighters grant to fund a 2015 fire safety, fire operations and safety grant. Item eight, request from the Acting Executive Director, Community Development Administration, for approval of board bill, un number unknown. This ordinance authorizes the mayor to submit an annual action plan to U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the 2017 Community Development Block Grant, uh, $16 million, Home Investment Partnership, $2,100,000, Emergency Shelter Grant, $1,473,173 and housing opportunity grants, housing opportunities for persons with AIDS, $1,554,940 and appropriating a total of $21,128,113 for said programs. Item nine, request from the Director, Information Technology Services Agency for approval to add one system project leader and delete one CAD technician from their table of organization. Item 10, request from the Police Commissioner, Metropolitan Police Department for approval to add a real-time crime center network manager and delete one librarian from their table of organization. That's the extent of items presented for the first time. Do we have any additions, corrections, or deletions? Okay. Hearing none, uh, at this time I will entertain a motion uh, for approval items of items one through 10 as printed. So moved. I'd like to separate out item six. And I'll second, I'll second the motion and we'll separate out item number six and we can do that. <coughs> That'll be fine. So um, we will take up items one through five and seven through 10. I move, um, I move for adoption of items one through five and 713. Okay, I think the motion's already there to move them all and so second, I second them all. We're now we're just taking them up separately, so, um, and we'll take up six last. So we'll take up one through five. There's a motion for approval of one through five and seven through ten. So uh, do we have any discussion on those? So we're, we, we, we need to, so we're amending that original motion. Well, the motion was to, no, the motion was to adopt them all, and I seconded them, and 
And all the comptroller did is ask if we would just separate that number six to, for debate yeah, and, and so, discussion. So we're just the amendment. So the now the, the issue is, is there any discussion relative to items one through five and seven through ten before we take a vote on those? No, there's nothing. So all those in favor in the, of, of, of approval of items one through five and seven through ten indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, those items have been unanimously approved. And uh, now we'll take up item number six, Madam Controller. I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, item number six is uh, a part of a, a larger uh, development area. And uh, we have come to an agreement on how we want to fund this first piece, this $2.8 million uh, for a TIF note. Uh, however, I have to be uh, very um, clear that the uh, CID in this case uh, is uh, very different from the CID of another one where we were looking at infrastructure needs. Infrastructure needs don't necessarily meet the needs of the community uh, for the 40 years that the law is allowing uh, for this CID. And in the case on uh, another CID, uh, Lockborough in particular, uh, which is not in North City, it's in South City, the needs of the community was taken into account to restrict the number of years and limit it to the um, outstanding uh, period of that uh, note or, or even to limit it to the term of the TIP itself. And of course, this is going uh, 15 years beyond that. So I take issue with that because I do know that we're looking at trying to um, have a, <clears throat> a successful NGA project. And so within that NGA footprint, I want to make sure we have available fundings that would uh, support the uh, public safety needs, which would be additional uh, security, which we promised uh, the whole city that we would make sure that we would have a safe neighborhood and safe site. And, and normally, SIDS are used for those kinds of needs, you know, the, 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 the security. And so I want to bring that to the attention. Uh, the lock barrel uh, CID is limited instead of 40 years, it's 25. And then instead of it going on you know, with no lid on the amount over a 40-year period, they limited to only the infrastructure amount so that that particular um, uh, CID board could then <clears throat> make adjustments into what the community needs would be. So that's, that's one of the things I wanted to discuss, that there should be a limit on the number of years and then there should be a limit on the what it's paying for, what it's said that it's paying for, which is a $2.8 million note, which would move the project forward, but not tie the hands of those who want to make the NGA uh, project a success. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I completely... Uh, uh, we have um, we have Dale Rusatz here with us. Dale? Yes. And I just wanted to kind of see if you can explain to us what we're... Well, Mark Spikerman is here too, our uh, okay. our council, and, and knows probably more about CIDs than I do. But I mean, the 40 years is certainly uh, a legal thing. It's not uh, uh, something, and in, in much of this money is going to be used for infrastructure. Though I, I I agree, it's probably not specified that it all has to be used for infrastructure. Mark, do you have anything to to pop in on that? Uh, I would just add that. The you know, CIDs can only be used for public purposes, including the infrastructure or security, as the comptroller said. Uh, I mean, whether it goes 25 or 40 years, the, the universe of costs it can pay for is limited to those public costs. So what I want to be clear about, because the comptroller is much more, um, obviously more uh, familiar with this particular item, and uh, that, um, and I've got a tremendous amount of respect for you and your judgment, of course, um, I'm trying to figure out how we proceed here. I mean, is there something, is there information you need? Or is there something that um, you wanted to change? Or, I mean, do we, do we move forward? Do we, or how do, what, what's I think if, your we're, if we're doing the best thing for the city overall, and as well as the citizens and the community, I think what we do is look at how we set up the board. 
so that's controlled by the community and not by the developer. And then what we do is we look at limiting the uh, dollar amount that we said that we want this for. So we said we wanted it for 2.8, let's limit it to that. And we said we want it for uh, infrastructure, and it does not take 40 years for infrastructure to be paid back. And so Loughborough is the key example we have to go by. Loughborough limited the amount of approved not to exceed five million, we can do the same, or not to exceed 2.8. It limited the years, even though the law said 40, we can limit it to 25 years. That gives more um, flexibility to the dollars that are coming in to that, that uh, site so that it can be used for security because we're gonna need security in that area just like we have in other areas around the city. We have in CID for, uh, for the Central West End. We have a, a few of them in all area, neighborhood areas in the city and it's all about keeping the city safe and we don't have one in that area yet but we're getting ready to build and we're gonna need that. We don't need to have a situation where they're trying to build something and things get stolen and, and this and that and people have issues that we could simply take care of it uh, or we could, the lawyer can say whether or not we can tweak it and have security as a, an additional part of the CID. But certainly we have to do something that protects the citizens. Um, and then in addition to that, the board of directors was appointed by the mayor. This one is different. And so, yeah. you know, when you talk about the That's neighborhood, you have to think about the people who live there now and the people who will be living there in the future and the huge development that's going to go there. Okay, I, I wouldn't want to have um, the lawyer, uh, if you could, for the record, state your name. And oh, Mark, oh yeah. my name is Mark Spikerman. I'm with Gilmore and Bell. We represent yes. SLDC on these type of projects. Okay, so um, I just wanted to make sure that we fully addressed the controller's issues. And uh, I know that there was, in, in, in the one, the, the mayor did appoint the, the, member, the, uh, the board members, but this is not an unusual, um, I mean, it's not unusual for the developers to have their uh, members on these boards. Is that no, right? most of the uh, most CIDs, of them, particularly yeah. when they're grouped with a, a tag. And I don't know why we did it the other way uh, right. at, at the law pro Commons. I don't, I don't know why we did this, I don't remember that far back. But um, I don't think that that's an unusual thing. The pop out the 40 years, and I know everything's every development's different. They have different dynamics and things like that. But is, is that an unusual? The, the one thing I was checking, and and the developer's attorney is here too, and maybe he recalls off the top of his head, uh, on Board Bill 150, which is not in front of the Board of Estimate Apportionment, uh, is a uh, district project agreement, and the purpose of that agreement is that it says the CID sends all its money over to the TIF. And I just wanted to see if there was anything uh, contractually in there that shuts off the CID uh, once the tip note is paid. And if there's not, that would be the place you would address it. Okay. Should we? Uh, what I what I do know is time is money, and I, what what I don't want to do is is uh, I, I want to make sure that we know what we're doing. We proceed. Uh, in an appropriate and uh, responsible way as we go forward. Um, is there a way we can, because uh, I, I just want to make sure we're, because this kind of came up, as far as I was concerned, last minute. I, I wasn't aware of this, this and issue. And I got the analysis this yeah. morning, so. Okay, okay. And that's okay. I get that part. I get that part. I want to make sure. So, um, so with, with, with this, this issue here, is there is there a way we can maybe hold this up? And may, I'm I'm just saying, can we well, hold this up? Be, that we, I think that the lawyer picked up on my concern, and that is to cut off the CID dollars, where it's no longer needed. You know, we've got that kind of trigger on the loft barrel, which I'm sure that the it supports citizens that know that dollars should not keep going to an effort that you don't where you don't need it. CID is the community going into the stores. They're going to be buying and they're going to be paying this, but they're going to look at what is it, where is our benefit? What are we getting for this extra cent? 
Central West End will know that they get security. Every time they pay that extra, if you're going down to um, Ballpark Village, you got extra security when you're paying extra money. We need to have the same um, benefit in this NGA site and for the people who are going to be using it. Those are the citizens. When they pay the extra money, it should go for their uh, support, public safety, additional security that supports that neighborhood not going into an effort that's already paid for. And so that's why I said, so we have to cut off, we have to tweak it, we have to make sure that the contract is not what I'm gonna call open-ended, because leaving it un, un, uh, un, if we don't amend it, it'll be open-ended, so a CID dollars will go long after infrastructure is built and maintained, long after uh, NGA is built, and then we'll be more likely looking for other kinds of dollars from somewhere else to pay for security, which we already made the promise that we would have tight and strong security in the area. We already promised mm -hmm. that. And here's the vehicle that we've used most often for more of the neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis, without a doubt, without a fail. And so I, I needed to bring it up to, to make sure that we didn't make a mistake. You know, because sometimes we look at very important uh, projects like this and uh, we don't see what we've done in other areas, like Loughborough, that made it more uh, effective for the, for the community. And so that's, that's why I'm bringing it up, because we, could, we have time. Uh, the board doesn't meet until Friday. This is Wednesday. And if we have to go back, get it right. We've got these capable uh, lawyers here. They can get it right. And then uh, we can re meet either Thursday, Friday, well, probably Friday, Thursday may be too late, but we can meet before we uh, uh, need to have this passed through the board in order to pass it on time so that they can stay on schedule and on time. But we do need, I mean, I just think it's important. We see, Law Girl tells us right here, 40 years is, is too long. That's at a minimum, 40 years is too long. The use of the monies uh, that's gonna go into this CD, CID paid for by the people that live over there and is you know going to work over there. They should have an opportunity to speak on behalf of how it should be spent. And all I could use is the examples we have in the past, and it's been spent in the past on security, nighttime security, uh, driving up and down those streets like I see over in Central West End and different other uh, communities in this city. And that's what we need. Okay, um, well, um, as I began uh, my remarks, and uh, I have a, lot of, have a lot of confidence in uh, the comptroller and her judgment and her professionalism, she is raising an issue here that I'm not that familiar with in terms of what our, what our options are as we go forward. And are, are you asking that we um, hold this up at this point? I think so. We need to hold it up because, what, in my opinion, the Board of Aldermen missed their opportunity but come to back. take the steps to take up this. Uh, but we can come back to approve it. But I do need, uh, and, and I'm glad that the attorney spoke out uh, honestly and said that we, they have not cut off the dollars uh, in a timely manner. Uh, that's going into the city. It's almost as if you have dollars going into a hole that's not, you know, just that little project area. Now what we, we're talking about is to make sure that those um, kind of rest uh, restrictions are put in place so that we can make sure that these kind of dollars that's going to be uh, collected can be for that whole area as opposed to that one. Because we want to take care of the infrastructure bottom line. But we don't want to keep having a flow of money going to a place where it's not needed. It ends up in the uh, wrong place. And that's just, that's just really the way I see it. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this, um, this deal is a little more complex than your average TIF, where, where it would, you know, you wouldn't be feed, feeding the seed from it and that, that sort of thing. So, so, you know, it's the mechanics of it that I think I think that's where we're at. We're in that we're, we're yeah. kind of in that little gray area mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. So to get some clarification, I know I know how I believe it would work, right? And uh, you know, I know you probably and, and the comptroller also. I think what would help is if we can hear from 
the uh, you know the attorney or the counsel on, on the other side, and then have some clarification from Dale uh, with that. Well, here's what I think. Here's what I think we need to do because because you know I, I think we're it sounds to me like we're not going to resolve it right here and, and now. And I'll, I'll well I'll take the 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 comptroller's request uh, as a um, as a request uh, or as a motion to uh, defer this uh, to another uh, meeting later this yes. week. Yes. Uh, and enough time for the uh, Friday meeting and that the, we, we can get better clarification to these issues um, and then we can we can move forward from there. So I'll, I'll take that as a motion. I, I make that as a motion. And, I will, and I, will, I will second that motion. I, I, okay. I don't think it's that complex of an issue. That, I mean, I think we can be through this thing in the, in the next four minutes, five minutes maximum. Um, you know, and you know, when we adjourn the meeting, by the time we all walk walk out of here, it's gonna this thing will be done, right? Um, uh, you know, uh, have to you know adjourn and then come back tomorrow or the, or you know Thursday right before the meeting. Um, it, today's <laughs> what I like about the com what, but what I like about the idea of, of holding this up is it gives us enough time to make sure that we're we're well informed because we can say keep going here and and having the negotiations or whatever it is going through this. I don't think it's. I think that it's giving giving the comptroller plenty of time to to make her case, and then we can all decide whether we we want to agree with the comptroller or we want to move forward. And, uh, or the and I think that's fair. And I think that's a fair approach. And it's not going to hold this thing up one day, as I understand it. And that's the, that's what I was mostly concerned about. Is not because this, this, yeah, these are complicated, and uh, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of work in these things. And every every deal is different. And I think that's something that uh, we have to we have to understand. But but I want to make sure if we're going to go forward that the comptroller has a chance to make her case. And we have a chance to consider her, her 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 views, and then we can go forward from there. We can have another meeting, and we will not hold up this yeah, but to, one day. To get it done before um, Friday's board meeting, um, when are we going to call this meeting? Is it going to be at four o'clock tomorrow? Is it going to be at? Because what time is it now? Um, yeah, let me get my phone. Right. We can do it Friday morning too. No, we can't. We cannot. First thing, no, we cannot do it Friday morning. I'm available at 4 o'clock tomorrow. tomorrow. Be fine. Whatever I have, I'll change it. But I just really think that the, the community did speak uh, about this, and I did you know, some research. It took a while because we have other things, but when I got it, I, I feel like we need tomorrow. to make this adjustment. Yeah, I can do it. All right, so let's do it. Let's, uh, so. But we got, we got to have it posted 24 hours a day. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. 3.30. That'll be fine. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. 3.30? Secretary's got some work. Secretary. Thank you. All right. So it's been moved and seconded, and uh, we've had our discussion, and we'll, we'll vote um, at this point. All those in favor of, of adjourning or, or to postponing um, item number six until um, our next meeting, which is scheduled for, or we plan on scheduling at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. Indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Unanimously approved. Okay, so item you. number six will be on the, on the agenda for tomorrow at 3.30. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So um, that's the extent of the items presented for the first time. Uh, do we have, if there's no, nothing further to be brought, brought before this body, uh, we have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 This meeting's adjourned.